life given today, my Lord. And I thank you, Jesus, that first and foremost, it comes from you. But then that you would send us out to do the same. So, Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. And all God's baby said, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Church, y'all may be seated in the precious presence of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is good. Amen. All the time. Guys, it is Easter Sunday. He's alive, right? Praise the Lord. Absolutely amazing that indeed our Savior King is alive and alive indeed he is. And thank you for that, Jesus. Man, uh, just a real quick story before we get into the word, but... We were doing communion uh, last night, which we'll do here in a little bit, but we were doing communion last night with, uh, with the family, and I was talking to uh, my kids about, uh, you know, the juice represents uh, the blood and, and the bread, or whatever they want to call that thing that we're getting ready to take here in a little bit, but um, <laughs> that thing that basically melts on your tongue, but uh, uh, how they consider that to be the body. And uh, so, you know, we're talking about it, and, and, you know, Elias and Gray and, and Everbeam, man, they're, they're in it, you know, asking questions. And uh, so I, got, I said, uh, uh, man, do you guys know who Jesus' daddy is? And any other time, they'd be like, yeah, it's God. You know, they're preacher's kids. They know all that stuff. And uh, so, <laughs> so uh, um, Elias goes, I know who it is. And, and Grayson goes, I know who it is. And everybody's just kind of looking at me. And I go, it, it starts with G. G. <laughs> right? You're teaching your kids how to sound things out. So I go, G, G. And Grayson goes, Gus. <laughs> yes. So we are thankful to have you guys in Jesus' name, Almighty God, and apparently Gus. So we are, we are so blessed and thankful. See, those are, those are like pastor dad successes right there. My son thought Jesus' dad was Gus. So praise the Lord. But, uh, <laughs> right? So he knows now. Because I was like, it's not Gus, stupid. It's God. You know what I mean? So he, he got that now. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Flip, he was like, oh, I didn't call him stupid. I called him an idiot. I've never called my kid stupid. But... <laughs> <laughs> but real talk, man, we are so glad and, and blessed, man, and honored indeed to have you guys here. Y'all could have been uh, been anywhere else. I pray in Jesus' name, man, that uh, churches all over the world are uh, are packed with people, man. Uh, one, to be encouraged with the message of Jesus, and two, also uh, uh, to perhaps for the first time hear the message of Jesus and get released from whatever dead situation that they find themselves <clears throat> living into. We, uh, we serve a risen king, praise the Lord. It's like I've already said, but you could look at other people who claim to be gods or other people who uh, um, have been pointed to as a god. But if you go to their tombs, I promise you, you find stench and bones. Yeah. But there is one true living God, and the reason why his tomb is empty is because he's alive. And that's the, uh, that's the God that we serve. So we're thankful for the empty tomb, for the resurrection, hallelujah, for the life that uh, he has given us the opportunity to begin to embark in if we simply grab a hold of who he is and his message. Amen? So praise the Lord for that. Guys, I wanted to come at y'all just with a little bit of a different Easter message uh, this Sunday, man, instead of the, uh, the average or the common uh, uh, resurrection stories of Jesus which are absolutely amazing but again you could go anywhere and uh, and and pastors are going to preach out of a very select few of, uh, of scripture so I just wanted to hit us with a little bit different today I was laying in uh, bed the other night just seeking the Lord in uh, what it was that he wanted me to talk about for Easter and I, I felt like I kept hearing him impress the word untie uh, into my heart so um, I know if you're like me man then you could immediately begin to think of situations that you need to be untied from, circumstances that you need to be untied from, people that you need to be untied from, this thing or that thing that you need to be untied from, right? And so immediately thinking about untied, I went to probably one of the most popular uh, stories in, in the church world of, of untying something, and that's Mark's Gospel chapter 11. And we're going to get into that here in a second. But Mark's Gospel, chapter 11, it's Jesus. And he's getting ready to go into Jerusalem. Now, this is going to be a week before the resurrection. It's going to be about a handful of days, man, before he's, uh, uh, um, he's, he's arrested and, and beaten and then crucified up on the cross. <clears throat> so... 
When we begin to look at this story in Mark's Gospel, chapter 11, we're going to start at verse 1 and go through 11. But before we get there, Jesus, as, as we could understand, whenever we talk about Scripture, Jesus is always the main character. Right? That's why nine times out of ten when a pastor asks you, what's the answer? The answer is going to be Jesus. Right? Because Jesus is indeed the main character. And we see that to be true in Mark's Gospel, chapter 11. But as we begin to get into this passage of Scripture that we're going to in just a few seconds, it becomes extremely obvious that, that somebody else has a, has a very strong uh, um, supporting role in, in uh, Mark's Gospel, chapter 11. And the uh, very strong supporting role that we're going to see here is not by a, a two-legged friend of ours, but indeed by a four-legged friend, a donkey. Right? And that got me thinking, and, and maybe uh, for you right now, of the multiple times that donkeys are actually a very strong leading role in Scripture. We have uh, the donkey with uh, uh, um, uh, Balaam when God spoke through the donkey to, to warn him of danger. We have uh, scriptures, man, that, uh, that show us when uh, uh, Jesus, Jesus' mom's riding through in one of their pilgrimages, how, our pilgrimage, she's uh, uh, on a donkey. How when Joseph gathers Mary and Jesus, when he, gets, when he has, receives a dream that they need to flee, so they're fleeing to Egypt to escape King Herod, they're, they're riding indeed on donkeys. So we see that with Jesus... Oftentimes, donkeys are tied to him. And if you think about it, it's so true with us. You know, a lot of times we, we joke and, you know, we pick how, you know, he refers to us as sheep, which he does because, you know, we're, we're stupid and, and uh, like a sheep. But also, if you think about it, we're, we're a donkey too because every single one of us are a jackass. Yeah. Right? That's King James, so I'm not cussing. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So when we begin to grab a hold of this, man, we can see how, how these donkeys are, are tied to him. So let's check this out. Mark's Gospel, chapter 11. And it says, as they approach Jerusalem. So now, like I said, here's Jesus and his disciples, right? And they're getting ready to, uh, to go into Jerusalem. And it says that Jesus sends two of his disciples saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you. And as you enter it, you will find a colt tied. Uh, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Tell them the Lord has need of it. And send it back. And we will send it back here shortly. They found, they went and found a colt outside the streets, tied to a doorway. As they untied it, someone standing there asked, what are you doing untying that colt? See, if you think about it, if you would just read the scripture, you'd almost think that Jesus was about, hey man, like, hey, go, go steal that donkey. Right? That's pretty crazy. Just go, and, don't even worry, just go untie it. And if anybody, so listen, I warn you, I warn you in Jesus' name, don't go try and steal something. And then when someone comes out and goes, dude, what are you doing to my car? The Lord is in need of it. We will return it to you shortly. It's not going to work. I promise. <laughs> and it says, uh, they answered as Jesus had told them, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and they threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks out on the road, while others spread branches that they had cut in the fields. Those who were ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus entered Jerusalem. And went to the temple. He looked around at everything. But since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Right? So, boom, we get this. Now, to me, this is, this is an awesome passage of Scripture. And you could take this passage of Scripture and really you could do a complete sermon series from Mark's Gospel, chapter 11, 1 through verse 11. But what we're going to try to do today is cram everything in here so that I could get you guys out of here for Easter dinner. Praise the Lord. But, uh, um, but so we begin to see this, and, and it's a powerful message to me, and it relates to today. Yeah. Right? And this is, what I, this is really what I want us to focus on today. When, when we begin to, here's Jesus. He, he's, he's entering in uh, uh, to Jerusalem, and he is so aware 
of what is getting ready to take place. Jesus is aware that his time on earth is very limited now. He knows that uh, what it is that he came to do for us is getting ready to indeed cross his path. Jesus is aware that in a matter of days that he's going to receive the worst beating of all mankind. Jesus is aware that in just a a short period of time, he's going to be humiliated, ridiculed, insulted, spit on, hated upon like no one ever before him or that no one ever will after him. Jesus is aware of this. Jesus understands that here in just a handful of days, he's going to be let down by the very ones that he raised up, that he's going to be betrayed by the very ones that he loved. Jesus is far too aware that in just a matter of days, he's going to be chained like a junkyard dog, that he's going to be whipped with the cat of nine tails that is literally going to rip the flesh off of his body. He is aware that in just a handful of days, the excruciating pain, the the deadly pain that is going to be partaking upon his life. He's aware of this. Make make no mistake. Jesus knew everything about the nine inch nails that were getting ready to pierce through his hands and indeed his feet. Jesus was aware that he was going to be hung on a cross like a savage criminal. He understood That there indeed was a tomb that was going to await him when his lifeless body was pulled up off of the cross. He knew all of this. He knew all of this and truth be told so much more that we would never be able even to begin to explain. And any movie could do its best to try to to tell about it. But nothing can ever come close to what Jesus actually went through. Jesus knew that he did no wrong. He knew that the wrong man was indeed going to be beaten almost to death, ripped apart, then hung on a cross, and indeed left to die. But yet he did this for me and you. Jesus also knew that all of this was going to take place in front of his mom and in front of those who begin to declare that they loved him. Right? Like, like he understood this, but even knowing what was getting ready to partake upon his life, Jesus did one thing that so many of us find so hard to do, especially if we knew this was going to be the outcome. Jesus put one foot in front of the other. He didn't allow the the fear. He didn't allow the pain. He didn't allow where his mind would begin to venture and, and wander off to of thinking about what was getting ready to partake on his life. He did not allow that to tie him down. See, some of us are tied down, but we're not tied down physically. We're tied down mentally. We're tied down spiritually. Jesus, tied down, is still putting one foot in front of the other. Tied down physically, putting one foot in front of the other physically. He's like chained like a ravaged dog. He knew that that he had to go forth. He knew that he had to put one foot in front of the other. Jesus, at that moment, was being a donkey for us. He was loading us on his back to carry us to where it is that we needed to be. The foot of the cross. So that later on, we could be the donkey and carry the message of the Messiah to where it needs to go. Into the darkness of this world. Right? Jesus knew that, but he knew the only way that he was going to be able to get the message out is if he indeed took one foot in front of the other, so on and so forth. Jesus was far too aware of the death that he was getting ready to partake in. And he didn't do it uh, 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 just to show off. He didn't do it just to prove he was God. He did it to spare us. He did it so that me and you would never have to drink the cup of death. Jesus knew he was, he was getting ready to, to, to partake in the, the world's worst thing. The biggest mistake 
that the world ever made, the biggest mistake the enemy ever made, but yet at the same time, make no mistake, not one of them had the power or the authority to lay him down. Scripture lets us know he did this. He laid himself down. If he was forced to do it, we wouldn't have the salvation that we have. He chose to do it. Why? Because of the love that it is that he has for us. The love that he has for me. The love that he has for you. So he laid his life down so that your and my life could indeed be raised up. Jesus allowed himself to be tied down and and beaten And left for dead so that in the future me and you could beat whatever it is that is tying us down and killing us. Right? Jesus did all of that and so much more for us. This verse is powerful. Oh, this passage is powerful. We see in just a few short verses that Mark actually mentions untied four times. Generally, when something is repeated in Scripture, the Lord's trying to get something across to us. And what he's trying to get across to us today is untie, untie, untie. And that's what I want us to concentrate on today is, is, is the role of this donkey that had to be untied in your life. What needs to be untied? See, I believe that there is a whole lot of folks out there today, man, who are like this donkey in the first three verses of Scripture. And he's tied up. You feel like you're at the end of your rope. You're waiting. And you're thinking to yourself, is this really it? Like, what's next? Is this really it? Is this really what marriage is like? Is this really what parenting is like? Is this really what adulthood is like? Is this really what church is like? Is this really what Christians are like? Can I get a witness? Right? Is this really what Christ is like? And you feel so tied down. Life, uh, uh, you get hit by life's blows day in and day out. You feel like you just cannot escape them right you're wounded by by the scratches and the beatings of failure and you're thinking to yourself is there anything else I feel like I'm tied to the situation that there is no escape for me and listen to me you're just like the donkey I get that we're not donkeys but oftentimes we are just like the donkey in this story tied up Maybe somewhere to go, but you have no options on getting there because you're simply tied up. How many of us are tied to unhealthy belief systems? How many of us have been tied to unhealthy teachings? How many of us are tied to a selfish attitude, materialistic things, tied down to social media, tied down to our cell phones? Like how many of us are tied down to Facebook and Instagram, TikTok? Hello, come on somebody, right? Not that anything's wrong with those things, but some of y'all is tied down to those things. How many of you guys take a picture and go, oh man, this is going to be an amazing picture compared to taking a picture to go, oh man, I need to put this on Facebook. How many of you guys just take a picture or go, well first, uh, let me put this here. Uh, Let me get that here. Let me get my coffee. Okay, this. Just my Bible study. (laughs) No, it ain't. You phony baloney. You set that up. You actor. (laughs) Come on, right? But that's the stuff that we do. Why? Because we're tied to it. We're tied to likes. Right? We're tied to wanting the best. Right? We're tied to this stuff. How many of us are tied to unhealthy relationships? People who you know you need to untie yourself with, but we use the Christian excuse, it would just be so ungodly for me to do that. Well, mind you, Jesus said, bad company corrupts good character. Untie yourself. Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. You coming with me or not? Untie yourself. Some of y'all tied to folks. 
folks are wondering why you can't get nowhere because you're dragging them with you. Hello. And all they're doing is slowing you down. <laughs> but I get it, Christian. It'd be so ungodly for you to be Christ-like. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Right? How many of us, how many of us are tied to unhealthy workplaces, unhealthy addictions, unhealthy struggles, unhealthy hardships? Listen to me. Sometimes life sucks. Other times we make life suck. Because we're tied to a hardship that has no authority or power to us. But we keep ourselves tied to it. How many of us are tied to guilt? Tied to shame? Stress, worry, anxiety, fear? Wow. Right? Like we're tied to these things. And then we're asking God, well, God, where are you? And he's going, well, I, I, I keep untying you and you, you, you keep tying yourself back. Like, where are you? Like, uh, I mean, that's, let's go. I, I say, let's go. And then you're like, okay. And then you tie yourself. And then you're like, well, God, I can't. Well, yeah, yeah, you can because I keep untying that. Well, why don't you just get rid of it? Because I want to see you be empowered Okay. To walk away from it. Okay. Listen, when the stove is hot in my house, guess what I don't do? <laughs> Number one is touch it. Very good. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> but I also don't keep everybody 10 feet away from it. I told my kids if you touch that, it's going to burn you. So now Grayson sometimes is a smarty pants. And he'll come up, he'll be like, is that hot? <laughs> I'm like, so what I tell him is, you tell me. <laughs> is it hot? <laughs> well, I don't know, Dad. You were just cooking on it. Good job, son. Then it's probably what? Uh. Probably hot. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> but I'm not going to bubble my kids. <laughs> Because then when they walk by a stove, they might just be like, oh my gosh, yeah, and they get, oh, my hands are melted off. You know what I'm saying? Because they've never had to learn. Right. And so many of us just want Jesus to, Ooh. everything is gone. When sometimes Jesus is going to break it so you will learn to walk away from it. He's not going to poof, disappear it, because then you don't learn from it. Right? Yeah. Look at people who are constantly getting in trouble with the law. And they get slapped in court and released. Arrested, slapped in court and released. Arrested, slapped in court and released. They never learn. Right. Right. That's so right. They never learn. Lock them up for a minute yeah. and let them learn. Okay. Right? So, so too. <laughs> some, some people still don't learn, sis. So you're right. Oh, you talking right. And you know what? Some people are still going to touch that stove. It's glowing red. This is amazing. You know what I mean? Some people just ain't going to learn. Some people are tied to stupidity. Come on, somebody. Untie yourself. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I kid. I kid. I kid. I kid. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I say I can't say sure they're going it's true it's true it's true <laughs> but man you look at you, you look at and, and it, it's it's cheesy it's cliche but it's so true the the story of the elephant right like you take this baby elephant you could put this small little rope on him and stick a stake in the ground and that baby elephant's going to learn that he can't break free from that rope. And then when that elephant is massive, turns into the massive animal that he is, you can still train him with that little rope and that stake that he's not going to try to break free from it. Why? Because he now believes that he can't. Right. And since he believes he can't, guess what that elephant's not even going to try to do? break free from it right. the enemy has beaten so many of us so much that we don't even try to untie ourselves or try to get us untied from certain situations any longer because we just simply believe this is life this is my life there is no hope it's over this is what I have to deal with so we simply don't even try 
to break free from the very thing that is actually hindering us, holding us in place, and killing us. We just simply stop trying. Maybe you're here today and you're realizing that indeed you need to be untied. Or, or maybe you're here today and you realize that you have indeed been untied. Then what I would say, praise God, congratulations, you are awesome. But my next question for you would be, how many people have you gone and untied? Notice the donkey couldn't untie himself. He had to have somebody come and untie him. Jesus couldn't just say, donkey, come. The donkey was hindered. We got people in our life right now, I guarantee you, that were going, why don't they just come to church? Why don't they this? Why don't they that? Why don't they do this? And why don't they do that? Maybe they can't. And the reason why it may be that they can't is maybe it's because they're tied to something and they simply can't get away. And what they need is not the judgmental spirit, but they need the one that's going to come and go, the Lord's in need of you. And begin to untie. The Lord's in need of you. The Lord's in need of you. The Lord's Now look, if you untie the donkey and the donkey run off, that's on him. Right? <laughs> but at least if you untie, hey, the Lord's in need of you. The Lord's in need of you. The Lord's in need of you. This donkey needed to be untied. So many people around us who I believe desire... Christ first and foremost desire an awesome life desire to be set free but they have been beaten and abused so long spiritually and mentally that they believe that they can't and they need somebody who knows that they can because you're untied so you need to indeed go to them and untie Easter praise the Lord Easter is not about baskets it's, it's not about uh, uh, Easter egg hunts and how many eggs it is you could find. However, if I go on an Easter egg hunt later today, I will win. <laughs> but it's not about, it's not just about winning, right? It is a little bit. <laughs> but we begin to look at it and, and it's not about Easter baskets. It's not about Easter eggs. It's not about the candy. It's not about the chocolate bunnies, right? It's not even about the turkey, the ham, the mashed potatoes, the corn, and all the fixings that you're going to have with all them sweet little desserts. Afterwards. It's not even about that. Easter is about a man who was dead, who came back to life so that a dead people can come to life. That's what Easter is about. Easter is about a donkey who got untied to carry the Messiah into Jerusalem so that indeed he could be up on the cross to die for my sins, to be placed in a tomb, to have the stone rolled away for him to come out to give me life. That's what, that's what Easter is about. Easter is about me becoming an untied donkey so that now I can carry the message of the Messiah to whomever it is that is facing a deadly situation so that they can become untied and experience the same life that I have. Good. Any village, any city, every town, any state, any workplace, any school that I travel into, yeah. I have the responsibility sure. of the donkey to carry the Messiah. But the donkey must be untied. Who in your life, or maybe it's you, must be untied? God. Easter is about answering the call to untying other individuals. Because I guarantee you, there are so many more donkeys in this world right now who are desiring the honor to carry the Messiah. But yet they're too tied up to answer the call. They're too tied up to be able to be set free to do what it is that they have been called to do. Their dreams and their desires are, are dead and gone because they've been tied up for far too long. It is time that we begin to declare to them the resurrected king. 
and begin to untie them so that their dreams, hopes, ambitions, and desires indeed can be resurrected. It's time that we stop being this baby elephant tied to a stake with a little piece of rope. And it's time that we begin to realize that we are an African freaking elephant, baby. <laughs> One of the most powerful animals to walk the face of this earth in Jesus' name. And that we would realize that every freaking time I take a step, that I rattle the earth beneath my feet. Yeah. Right? It's time that we begin to realize that. That there is no stake. There is no enemy. There is no rope. There is no circumstance. There is no situation that has the strength, authority, power, or ability yeah. to tie me down. Because I have already been untied and resurrected by Jesus Christ. Yeah. Right? It's time for us to begin to grab a hold of that and realize that. Here's the thing, church. When we celebrate Easter today, again, remember, it's not just celebrating the resurrected king. It's not just celebrating of, 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 of the life that Jesus indeed has by walking up out the tomb. It's celebrating that he is the one who set us free. It's celebrating that we are free from any dependencies, that, that we are free from any uh, afflictions, that we are free from anything and everything that has ever tied itself to us, that we have been set free. Miss me with the generation of curse because it's untied and broke over your life if indeed you declare it in Jesus' name. And here's the beautiful thing. It cannot tie itself to you again if you don't go back and tie yourself to it again it's been broke it's been shattered it's declared you are free hallelujah that's what Easter is about that's what he did for you he resurrected you untied you from death untied you from the tomb or the uh, uh, and, and rolled away that stone so that your life is no longer linked to a rope and a stake but your life is linked Praise the Lord to the resurrection king. Your life is linked to the life and the life of abundance. That's what it needs to be linked yeah. to. It's the transformation that takes place that we were once on the back of Jesus. Right? Like I said, that we were once on the back of Jesus and he carried us like a donkey to get us to where it is that we need to be. Then the transformation takes place that we become the donkey to carry the message of the Messiah to wherever it is that it needs to go. And here's what I want us to, to grab a hold of, man. Church, listen to me. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived in a world right now that is deceiving so many people. And I don't just mean in the world. The world has done that from day one. That's what the world do, does. But the church world. Just because somebody's chanting, Hosanna, 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 don't mean they're untied. That's right. The very folks chanting Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna on Sunday were chanting crucify, crucify, crucify on Friday. Right? So we have to begin to grab a hold of this. There is so many church folk tied. And tied up and almost at the point of becoming blind to the stake and the rope that is holding them. They're so naive to what's actually going on. They're so, they're so confused because they know what, what Scripture says. And, and, but but they, they're not fully doing it. But they think they're doing more than what it is that they're doing. But yet the enemy has been deceiving them. Wow. They're being deprived from that full life of Christ. Why? Because it's just, at, 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 at just right outside their reach. But they feel good because they can see it. It's kind of like our diets that start tomorrow. <laughs> right? we, feel, we feel good about it because we say we're going to do it tomorrow. We just, tomorrow just never comes. Tomorrow is the greatest trick of the enemy. Do it tomorrow. Start your Bible study tomorrow. Go to church tomorrow. You know what? Uh, pray tomorrow. Uh, get into another devotion tomorrow. Right? And then tomorrow just never ends up coming. And that's how so many of us are. We're tied to this thing. And it's, it's like that dog. <laughs> When I was growing up, this, this isn't nice, but when I was growing up, uh, there was this dog. And every time we would go by his house, man, the, the, they had him chained to a tree. And every time we'd go by his house, he would run. And when that chain hit, 
We didn't know Jesus, but we were praising him. Because like that, that chain stopped that dog. Well, one day we got keen to what was going on with this dog. Like he could only go but so far. So what we began to do was leave him food right out of his reach. Right? So he would come running and we'd go... Bloop. And then the whole time he's going, and he could just never reach that food. But man, he's not even minding us anymore. You know what I'm saying? He's just trying to get that food. And that's how so many Christians are. You end up choking the life out of yourself, trying to get life, but yet you're tied up. And the whole time the enemy's just laughing at you. He don't care you could see it. He don't care you could hear it. Come in and raise your hands. Yeah, when, that tithe, when it's time for tithes, you could drop it off in the back. Yeah, you could even say that prayer. Oh, hallelujah, don't you feel so good? But it's just right outside your grasp. Why? Because I still have you chained. I still have you tied. However, you don't even acknowledge that you're tied because you're in the house of the Lord. Because you just praised him and you said hallelujah. Oh, you so holy. Hallelujah came out your mouth. Right? And the whole time the enemy's like, man, I'll give you a little bit more slack. I'm just going to kick that a little bit more. I'll give you a little bit more slack. I'm just going to kick that a little bit further. I'm always going to keep you just out of reach of what it is that you truly need. I'm going to deprive you of the life and the life to the abundance. And what that dog needed was somebody to come and untie him so he could get to what it was that he was trying to get. See, the problem is not with religious folk that they don't want it. I believe a lot of religious folk want Jesus. They just don't have him. They're just right out of the grasp of true relationship opposed to true religion. Right? And he just keeps them just at bay to keep their attention, to keep them moving, to keep them motivated. But they're just so miserable. And so many people in the church, we come with our, our, our pretty little smiles and our makeup and our hair did right. But truth be told, man, we're just miserable. We're miserable because the enemy has us tied and he's depriving us from the true life. But we fool so many people because we chant Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. So they don't think that we need to be untied when truth be told, they're the very ones who need to be untied. So pay attention. Not by what somebody says. The enemy is a wonderful speaker. He will talk your pants off, your panties off. He will talk your glasses off. He will talk whatever it is that needs to come off. He's an amazing speaker. So don't pay attention to the words that come out of somebody's mouth. Pay attention to the fruit that comes out of their life. And that will always expose. Well, they're a work in progress. Awesome. Then your progress should be getting away from them and allowing Holy Spirit to do the work. Yeah. Because if they're still a work in progress and they're still flirting a little bit with the enemy and you're still hanging with them, well, eventually that flirting with the enemy is going to begin flirting with you. And like if they're tied up, eventually that same link is going to be tied up to you. Now we're going to have to come and untie two people. Right? So we have to begin to pay attention to this. The, well, some of us are too, too blind to see that we're chained to fear. Too blind to see that we're chained to worry. Uh, lusts of any and every type. So disciples, praise the Lord. And what we have to do is go and untie. Are you willing to go and untie? Because truth be told, nobody, nobody can fully be committed to Christ. Nobody can fully live a Christ-like life. Life and life to the abundance. Nobody can ever truly experience the resurrected King and walk in the power and the authority that Jesus has given us if we remain tied. We will always be hindered. So ask yourself, do I know somebody who is tied? Or ask yourself, am I being tied? Are there ropes holding me back? Are there ropes holding me back from the direction that I know that I'm supposed to be going in? Are there ropes keeping me stuck and tied in the same place? What is it that you're going to do? Reach out. 
Go untie someone. If you're tied, reach out for help and say, hey guys, look man, I'm miserable. I believe that I'm tied. Because you're never going to be broke free as long as we fake the funk. Jesus has life and life for the abundance for each and every single one of us, not a select few. He didn't come up out of that tomb for a handful of people. He came out of that tomb for the world to receive who he is. But some of us are tied up and we think that life is over. There's nothing left. We begin to, to believe in our mind, man, like we are that baby elephant. But Jesus, mind you, is the risen king. And he came to untie who needs to be untied. He came to untie us from whatever it is that we're tied to and has been holding us back. Jesus came to break any and every yoke over our lives. To declare that your life is not over but has actually just begun in him. There is still so much for each of us to do. And the Lord, like the disciples said, the Lord has need for you. He has need for you. So he is in the untying donkey business. He is in the uh, business of breaking people free. Setting people free from whatever it is that is holding them back. We were never once created to be a donkey tied to a stake. We were indeed created to come out of tombs alive, full of life. Amen as an untied donkey to carry the message of Jesus Christ. That's what we're created to do. And church, today, each and every single one of us, no matter who you are, what you've done, or where you come from, have the opportunity to be untied, to carry the message of Jesus Christ upon your back to wherever it is that you go traveling to. If I could have my worship team come up. We're going to begin to get in communion. But we just thank you, Jesus. God, we praise you. We love you. You are absolutely amazing. God, we thank you indeed that you have untied me, my Lord. And God, I thank you for the people who are in here today whose lives have indeed been untied. I thank you today, my Lord Jesus, for those, my Lord God, who have been set free. For those, my Lord, who were once dead but are now alive. I thank you, Jesus, that we have the option to be freed and we have the option to stay as tied up as a prisoner, Lord. God, and I pray today that we will pick the option to be set free in you. God, I pray today, my Lord Jesus, that we will declare freedom. In your holy and righteous name. I pray today, my Lord, that we will begin to declare who you are in our lives. That we would begin to declare, my Lord Jesus, the freedom that we have. And Lord, that we would take that freedom and go into the cities, the towns, the villages, the states, wherever it is that you would send us. And Lord, we would look for the people. Not just those who are, who are in the church. Not just those that we can get encouraged by. But Lord, that we would also look for those, Lord, who are tied up. That we would go to them in boldness, in faithfulness, and in strength. And begin to declare to them that the Lord is in need of you. And God, that we would simply untie them from the very thing that has been hindering them. Lord, as we take your bread to represent your body, we thank you, Lord, that you allowed it to be beat, torn apart, God, destroyed <coughs> for us. God, we thank you, my Lord Jesus, that you were willing to Take upon something on your life, God, that we would not be able to handle, my Lord. God, I thank you, Jesus, that your body, broken for my sins, my Lord. 
so that in your body, God, I can find life. And Lord, as we take this to represent who you are, Lord, you told your disciples, do this in the remembrance of me, Lord. And God, I say it every time, but that, Lord, that word remembrance also means to be put back together. So I thank you that the church will be put back together. Our life with you will be put back together. And in the faithfulness of communion, God, not just looking at it as a chore, but in the faithfulness of communion, God, that you would begin to put back together relationships, marriages, that you would put back together people's faith, people's trust, people's hope, that you would put back together, my Lord Jesus, a fallen nation, that we would indeed be a people, God, one nation under God Almighty. So Lord, we thank you for that as we take your, bre your bread as your body. Lord, we thank you for your blood that you shed for us. Your blood that is so sweet, so precious, so powerful. A blood that covers, a blood that heals, a blood that is divine, a blood that protects. And God, I thank you, Jesus, that it is your blood that has covered my sin. It is your blood, my Lord God, that has covered my life. It is your blood, my Lord Jesus, that protects me from the scams of the enemies, my Lord Jesus. God, it is your blood, my Lord God, that has saved my life. My name is written down in the Lamb's book of life because of the blood that you shed for me, Lord. And I thank you for that, Jesus, as we begin to drink this juice to represent your blood. As it coats the inside of our mouth and down into our throat, my Lord Jesus, I pray, my Lord, that we would just spiritually visualize your blood coating us, covering us, healing us. God of mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, sexual diseases, hurts, wounds, hindrances, God, that we would become healed, healed by the stripes you took for us, healed by the blood you poured out for us. God, that we would walk in the life that you have given us. Lord, we thank you as we take that drink. God, we thank you that we have the honor to take the drink of the juice and not the drink of the death, God, because you drank that cup for us on that cross. Lord, we thank you that your birth was absolutely amazing. We thank you, my Lord God, that your death was indeed a good thing for us. But Lord, I celebrate the fact that we couldn't just stop there. For if you were born and if you died and if you laid in that tomb, your birth meant absolutely nothing for us. If you laid in that tomb, the life you lived means absolutely nothing to us. We're still hopeless. We're still helpless. But God, the empty tomb and our resurrected King shows the life and the alive to the abundance that we have. It shows us that we have hope in you. It shows us that there is help in you. So Lord, we thank you that today, Easter Sunday, my Lord God, is the greatest thing that we get to celebrate. The fact, my Lord God, that our risen King has allowed us to cross over from death to life today. And church, so too is it for you. Simply sitting right where you're at, listening over the uh, Facebook, wherever it is that you're at, 
If you desire life, if you desire to be untied, simply open up your heart right where you're at and ask the Lord, Jesus save me. Lord, untie me. And I promise you this, his answer is yes. And as you begin to walk with him and talk with him, Holy Spirit's going to begin to teach you, lead, guide, direct you, to teach you to withstand from ungodly things. Don't worry about what you have to change. Just submit yourself to the king. And he will make all the changes necessary in your life. He will begin to reveal to you the things that you used to once cherish that you will no longer. The things you used to once partake in, you will no longer. Those things that that used to kill you but you thought were so fun, he's going to begin to expose all of these things. And you're going to realize the life in Christ and the death in the world. And you're going to be so joyful, so at peace, so filled with hope that you cannot nor would not want to contain it. But get out there and untie those people just like you yourself were untied right now. So Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. And all God's baby said, hallelujah. Church, stand to your feet. We're going to get back into worship. Our ties and offering buckets are there in the back.